Ever notice how the first 15 to 20 minutes of your run is often the hardest? Well, there's a reason for that and something we can do to minimize that. Hi, I'm Ralph and welcome to the Aegis Runner. I enjoy running, but I especially enjoy sharing things about running that I think might help you in your running career. If you're interested, please consider subscribing to my channel by clicking that subscribe icon down in the corner. Thank you so much. So that first 15 to 20 minutes, first mile or two, however you want to look at, can often be the hardest for a runner, but there are some physiological reasons for that. Sometimes there's some psychological reasons, which I think come from the physiological. If it's hard to run in this first 15 to 20 minutes, the mind's kind of telling you, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this. So we're going to talk today about the physiological, and if we can do something about that, that'll help any psychological issues you might be dealing with. Now the first physiological issue I want to talk about is joint stiffness. I don't know about you, but when I get up first thing in the morning, I'm really stiff. Now the way our joints get lubricated is through something called synovial fluid, which is in the lining of our joints. But we need to move our joints around. We need to move them around to secrete that synovial fluid and lubricate our joints. Now the other whammy as older runners have is we have less of that fluid, so it takes even more activity and more movement to get our joints lubricated. So that's why I never run first thing in the morning. I'm just too stiff. It just doesn't work for me. But once you do start moving, you start running and get through that first 15 to 20 minutes, then your joints are lubricated and it feels a little better. So next physiological reason is I think the main reason, and now I want to compare that to pandemic shortages. You may remember early on in the COVID-19 pandemic, there were shortages at the stores, notably toilet paper. I don't know why, but for some reason, all the toilet paper got sucked off the shelves. They get a few deliveries in, it would get sucked off. But eventually over time, manufacturers caught up, uh, supply kind of caught up with demand and the, and the supply became very regular and plentiful. A similar thing happens in, in our body, not, not with toilet paper, with oxygen. When you start running, all of a sudden your muscles are saying, oxygen, oxygen, I need oxygen. But you know what? You're in an anaerobic state. You don't have a lot of oxygen in your blood. So your body starts working really hard to increase that oxygen supply. Your heart starts beating fast. Your heart tries to increase the amount of blood volume in each stroke. And then um, your lungs are breathing hard. And also your body starts to redirect blood flow from internal organs like your gut to your muscles. All of that makes that initial running very hard until your blood supply gets more oxygenated and then it gets a little easier. Pretty soon you realize your breathing's a little more regular, your heartbeat's a little more steadier, and you're kind of running a little easier pace. But getting from that anaerobic to that aerobic state just takes some time. We all got to go through it, but that's what makes it seem so difficult. So we can't eliminate joint stiffness, we can't eliminate the increased demand for oxygen, but we can do some things to minimize it to help our cause. And the biggest thing we can do is called the warm-up. Uh, we need to spend five minutes doing an active or dynamic warm-up. Think about it. If you're moving a little bit ahead of time, you're lubricating your joints, you're starting to get your heart rate up, you're starting to increase that oxygen supply. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Do some active or dynamic stretching and flexing. Do some simple exercises like push-ups, sit-ups, Burpees, I can't do burpees, I'm a little too old, my joints aren't, aren't the best to do that. But you can do um, something like that. What I like to do is a very slow run. I'll go out and run very slowly for about five minutes. After I've done my stretches, I run very slowly for about five minutes. The idea is get the heart rate up a little bit, uh, somewhere around 100 beats per minute. That's kind of preloading your body. It's kind of getting uh, a little bit of oxygen into your blood. So when you do start running, you're already queued up and ready to go. So let's compare that back to my toilet paper example. If the toilet paper manufacturers had a sales and marketing forecast that said, hey, you know what? In a month, you're going to have this huge increased demand for toilet paper. They would have done something, right? They would have ordered more raw materials, maybe hired more people and trained them, maybe increased equipment capacity. So when that demand hit, they could start ramping up and meet the demand. So that's what the warm-up does. The warm-up kind of preloads our body, it gets the heart rate up a little bit, starts preloading some oxygen in the bloodstream. So when we start running, we can get from that anaerobic to aerobic phase pretty quickly. Now, if you're a beginner runner, getting from anaerobic to aerobic is gonna take longer. You don't have the cardiovascular uh, fitness or conditioning that a regular runner has, but all runners go through it. So if you're a beginner runner, be patient. That'll improve a little bit, but do the warm-ups and that will help your cause. Now, the second thing we can do to help get through that initial 15 to 20 minutes is get hydrated, drink water at least 30 minutes before you run. And if you're a coffee drinker, by all means, drink that cup of coffee. I would never go out without my cup of coffee. Nobody wants to be going through caffeine uh, withdrawal, no matter how minor or how major, uh, when, you're, when you're doing a run. That just makes the whole thing worse. So have your water, have your caffeine, uh, have a little something to eat, obviously, before you ever start your run. 
Hey, thanks again for watching my videos. I hope you found it helpful. If so, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel by clicking that subscribe icon. Thank you so much.